Welcome back. I have got Jacob Mulaku in studio. Tabitha Gutu via Zoom from Sia and Hamisi Bog as well via Zoom from Mombasa County. All right, Jacob, so before we took a break, you were saying something, and l let me just put it into perspective. I'm not supporting any political side. I am a moderator. So the question I ask does not lean on any political side. That's it. So let me ask you. You are saying that uh, some of the governors are being forced to on the people. But what about the governors who are supporting the DP? They are not being forced on people? And what, uh, what we, are, we, we are not getting right here mm. is uh, the governors who are supporting the deputy president. Yes. Uh, they have a right to, to do so. Absolutely. The governors, the governors who are supporting the right honorable uh, Raila Molodinga mm -hmm. have the right to do so. Yes. But my main concern is... Mm -hmm. For example, if a governor, uh, say from Busia County, mm -hmm. is leaving office, when then he fronts a candidate that he says is his preferred candidate, mm -hmm. and telling people that you must elect this candidate, that is where my worry comes. Mm -hmm. What interest does he have that he has to leave someone to? to come to office after him. Why yes. can't he let the people of Busia choose? To choose and pick for themselves. Yes, pick for themselves. Among the people who are presented, mm. they are great dangers for election. Mm -hmm. The same thing for the top seat. The president, uh, our president uh, Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta is leaving office. Mm. Why can't he let Kenyans choose the president that they want between those who will present their great dangers for election? Mm. He has a right to choose mm -hmm. whomever he likes or whomever thing he thinks that can take this country to greater heights, mm -hmm. but through the ballot, not through using state machinery mm -hmm. to do so. Yes. Yes, that is what I mean. What is, the, what is the greatest fear in the president doing so? The greatest fear is uh, uh, president, as he stands today, yes. he's still in office. Right. He's a simple law of national unity. Mm. So if he takes sides, mm -hmm. What happens to the other people who do not subscribe to his way of thinking? Mm. Do we lose that respect to him as our president? Mm. What happens? The elections, during election, uh, during campaigns, let me say during campaigns, mm -hmm. there is a lot of murky talks. Mm. And I'm sure uh, there's going to be a lot of name calling and insults, uh, the yes. Kenyan way of politics. Mm -hmm. So and that's what, quite synonymous with our political scene. Yes, I mean, what, what happens as a president mm -hmm. uh, being a symbol of national unity, people insulting him and uh, calling him names while he's still in office. Mm -hmm. Why can't he stand aside and let those people who are vying for office mm -hmm. uh, do this work for mm -hmm. themselves? Mm -hmm. Raila Molodinga has the potential to do this. Mm -hmm. I don't think he... he, he, he he needs or he requires the input of the president at uh, a public level to to secure uh, yes. w whatever he wants to be in this mm. country. Okay. Uh, Missy, I don't know what's your take on that particular <laughs> statement that Jacob has just put across. I'm surprised by my colleague Jacob. When, when we are here professionally, we, we mm. all have some, some uh, feeling for some of the candidates. I have my vote and I know who most. But here I'm trying to open up in terms of understanding professionally or in politically what is happening. So yes. everybody has an influence. I wish the vice president was not, the deputy president was not standing because they are all having professional, uh, influential office. When the vice president, when the deputy president comes to Mombasa, we treat him as deputy president before we, we listen to him as a politician. But uh, incidentally, this time, uh, he is standing and he has an influence. The mm. president is not standing but has an influence. So this is what politics is all about. And we need to give uh, credit for where it is. Everybody has an influence. When we campaign for a candidate, we are influencing the people. Those who, yes. who those of us who are on the top of the cars, we're influencing the, uh, the vote to the preferred one. So everybody has a preference. And uh, what is uh, the Two must do is to use the strategies to be able to influence uh, uh, the, uh, the, the voting without hurting anybody, without hurting mm. anybody. Because I don't think whether the president said you must vote. 
uh, for so and so. I don't think whether the deputy yes. president says you must vote for me because of. So they should just sell the strategies, and I think we we should not take sides in terms of uh, uh, saying he should do this, he should not do this. Influence in politics is about stakes. Uh, mm. When he somebody says that they want to protect their, they must be protecting whatever. Yes and no. They might be protecting whatever they want because they think if so and so comes, the system will be be good. And when he said uh, some of the uh, people who are uh, uh, in Azimio have questionable, uh, maybe political financial queries, all right. of them, all of them. Me, I, I can, I can give. Mr. I, Mosha, I did not mention. I, I did not say uh, governors from Azimio. I governor, said governor, uh, governors in general. Whether then, they are supporting this, Azimio, they are supporting Kenya Kwanza. They should stand aside and let Kenyans choose whomever they want to lead the counties. Jacob, they can't. And the, when the earlier you said it was the governor. You see, when we go that say that they can't, then you are losing this country. Because we cannot have uh, leaders who have messed the country and still we want them to continue uh, telling us which way to take. We as Kenyans, Jacob, we, have, uh, we have a right to choose uh, the right candidates for ourselves. Victor, Victor, allow me to finish. Uh, uh, Jacob, mm. the people on both sides have, have some issues. And they cannot stand because they they are Kenyans. They have a political uh, point of view, and they can, so the people we we are the Kenyans who know. We have been informed. We have been informed. So we we'll make a decision whether they campaign day and night or not. We will make a decision. But allow them because you are also limiting their freedom. Say they should stand aside. They should not support. This is not the democracy we we fought, we fought for. So allow them, allow everybody to say only that uh, our concern is the language they use, the strategies they use, uh, especially, and then the, uh, the citizenry will make a decision. Who has said something that touches services? Yeah. Because what for, for a long time I've not heard about people talking about the services we shall provide. And we have had the promises we shall be able to do this. The missing link is how. How are they going to provide education? How are they going to provide security? How are they? Because that one will make me decide. Oh, this strategy for this particular person is good. So let's open up. Let's discuss freedom. Let's discuss democracy. Let's discuss. But let's make sure that whoever has a point, let them say it. Because if they stay at home, okay, some of them are still interested in coming right. back. If you right. stay at home, you must okay. stay in the system. Okay, okay, I'm um, just, uh, Tab Tabitha, allow me to uh, perhaps just get your point on this situation because. Why is everyone not so comfortable with the president campaigning for, actually, not even campaigning, but fronting Honorable Ray Lodinga to be his successor? What is the level of discomfort in this situation? I, I, like you, I do not understand. But, but mm. let, me, let, me, let me respond a little bit. Um, <laughs> Why like me? <laughs> to Juma. Um, yes. Honestly. Actually, um, he's, he's Jacob Mulaku. He's Jacob Mulaku. Okay, ja sorry, sorry, sorry for yes. that, uh, Mr. Mr. Jacob Mulaku. Mm. You cannot, you cannot come on a national television and tell us uh, that um, uh, that uh, the president, as a sign of, um, of of national unity, which he is, uh, him supporting uh, Honorable Raila Molodinga as his preferred candidate, mm. and he has not even come to you with with a gun with a gun on your head and told you that. And he hasn't done that to anybody. That he, you must and you must and you must vote for this candidate. And then you, you want to tell us that um, that he's forcing him on people. He's not forcing Honorable Raila Molodinga or in any city on any citizen of this country. It's 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 quite despicable um, for for you to come and tell us that. Uh, I, I mean, more than anybody, we know that here we're not literally uh, trying to align, align or trying to you know, um, person, I mean, personally uh, or, or try to make other people look bad personally. Uh, it's not something that we're here to do. We are literally here to discuss things as they are. I, I, and when you say that. Um, 
somebody is forcing somebody on this somebody, then he also has to give us a proof because it can't just be with what. There is no ever day that the president ever spoke on any national television and said or any place that I'm forcing Ren Lodinga that if, if, you know, if somebody is being forced on you, like if you do not do it, there must be repercussions for that. We have not seen that anywhere. Uh, secondly, uh, then it will be it will be um, wrong for him to try to say that Kenyans we are not united. Kenyans we are united. The president has worked so hard to unite Kenyans. Initially, we were not united as Kenyans. Uh, uh, you could not go to some part of this country or talk to some this part who are speaking this particular language. So so mm. far, as Kenyans we are very peaceful and therefore do not try and peddle that idea of Kenyans being disunited because the president, as an individual, is supporting his own preferred presidential candidate. Because at the end of the day, the the president has to vote like you and me and any other person. And he has to vote for an individual. So uh, I, I, the problem is, is not, if he was supporting Deputy President William Bruto, then we, should, we will not be having this discussion of him forcing anybody on anybody. It's just because he has stood his ground, gave us direction, and said, me as the president, Nikona Kurayangu Moja. And since other people also believe in him and would yeah. want to also vote the same person that he also wants, then Piasif Shreka Kurazetu Piau and then we vote for somebody who we believe in. The same thing will happen to Deputy President William Bruto. Mm. So let us not have double standards again here. But then now, um, if, if you're going to say, initially they were telling us that Raila is, a, is, a, is the government's project, and then we say that the Raila is, a, is the people's project, and now that we have proven that it is literally people's project, now is another problem, because now, what again are they peddling? I want us that we have conversations that are ideology based uh, Kenyans we are dealing with a lot at the moment and we should not be using that as politics we should not be using the lives of Kenyans as politics let us have leaders who sell the agenda and let it not be agenda of fallacy and lies mm. and side uh, double side talks Literally, I've also seen uh, that our co-panelist is, is very good in, in, in double sides. He'll say this one this time and then now when he's try we are trying to really literally mm -hmm. get to understand what he's saying. Then he pulls yeah. out and say, I did not mention that. I want us to literally look at our leaders because we, we are trying to give a country mm -hmm. direction. And the direction can only be done if we discuss issues that mm. literally matter to Kenyans. We do not care who and who is trying to be forced on who. We want to know, okay, this person who is being forced to Kenyans, is it really good for Kenyans, you know, as you put it? So let's let, let literally okay. have um, Tabitha, 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 I think, I think I, we would like to uh, just, you know, rub this word forced of air so because it's political season yeah. and of course you know every politician have a right to actually to campaign for their preferred candidate for that matter but yeah. either way it might sound so or it might look so and uh, i don't know what jacob is talking about because jacob is in studio here and i wish to respond to yes now, uh, Tabitha, uh, someone needs not to come with a gun and point your head to to be seen to force you to do something. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether you are in this country when uh, parliamentary committees and leadership were being dismantled and uh, rearranged. The likes of Kipchumba Murkomen at the Senate, uh, Kithure Kindiki and, uh, and the staff. I think that this is an indication that uh, either way, uh, the president or rather the state machinery is hell bent to have a certain, a certain person sent to power mm -hmm. of, of this country. Uh, that is the worry. That is the worry of many Kenyans who love this country. But for those uh, th those Kenyans who just want to move forward with uh, it's our peop it's our person, I think they are comfortable with that. Okay. Okay. Tabitha, what do you make of that? Yes, I have been in this country. I have been in this country. I have been following this event and, and I've been contributing to the same discussions. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, what literally um, um, uh, Jacob is not understanding is the fact that you cannot have your cake and eat it. You cannot be in the government at the same time in but the same Kenya, government. Uh, uh, Sabi, the Kenya, Kenya so is you, a cannot align your, you, cannot, you cannot align yourself as a democratic country and, and you and and the president deliver services the way they're supposed to be delivered. The president had to streamline his services and how they're being done because he's the head of the government. There had to be some order. 
So if you want to, to Kenya is not a dictatorship country. It's not a dictatorship country. That is one thing and that was, that was democracy. And we are literally trying to, to tell those people who thought they could have their end of the day by wanting to just come and do things the way they want, that there has to be order. You are either in the government and support the government. You, you cannot be trying to subordinate a government and at the same time be in it. The, what they needed to okay. do, they formed the government. They needed to support the Big Four agenda. That is not what they were doing. And therefore, the president, mm-hmm. because he has a legacy to keep on the country to, you know, guard over, he had to do something. So, Okay, yes. all right. Uh, let me see from Mombasa, you can give us some ocean water to calm this and neutralize. Uh, <laughs> what do you have? We are running out of water here, let me see. <laughs> I want to come in right now and say... By the way, yes. we are forgetting one thing that uh, is not the president we are talking about, is the presidency. Yes. All the time we talk about the presidency. So why are they not talking on the same line so that we hear what does the presidency say? Because the president, the deputy president is as as powerful as the president in terms of the constitutional issues. So when any one of them speaks, we hear the country is speaking. When we hear that they are not speaking on the same line, then it's confusing the whole country. So what we're saying is allow, now we have reached at a place where allow them to give us the strategy. For example, I want uh, the, the deputy president to come and say, apart from whatever I've been saying for the last many months, these are my strategies. These, when I, I, I take the, the office, I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll do this. And the process is this. Finished. The rest, politics leave it to us because we... Sometimes we speak in the outside, but we don't affect the, the system. But for them, whatever they say, we take it. We take it very hard. Uh, and yeah. For example, if you go back to the same old theme that you 10, me 10, when the president makes 10 and then deputy president makes 10, how about the rest of us? Because I, I want my son also to be the president. When are they coming in? The moment you divide that, you create an impression that these guys would like to stay there for, forever. And the Kenyans will not allow that. So we are saying, that's what I'm saying, this language, whatever we are using, let's be as professional as possible, let's be as polite as because we are requesting. The leadership, like I said last time, is persuasion. Let's persuade the people who are listening to us to vote for a particular candidate. Mm-hmm. And uh, we, I don't, have never seen a, a, force, a forceful uh, statement that you must do this or otherwise. Because if you give a condition, there must be a, a counter condition. If uh, you don't do this, do this. I have never heard about that. These guys are really doing their job. I want them to straighten the strategies so that they, they leadership is hope. We want to get hope. We want to yeah. be promised that uh, things will be better, the uh, services will be provided, uh, the country will be peaceful. If those are the things that uh, the old people like us would like to hear. And we are, we are saying publicly, please, those who get the pl- platform, let it be used nicely to bring people together than mentioning names. People are using even names. They're using uh, families' issues. Uh, his mother, his father, his uncle. He, no, it can't be. Lastly, I want to say that one time the deputy president says, even if all of them combine together, I'll, I'll still beat them. So what is what has changed? Because that is now, uh, 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 no, what, what has changed? Politics has changed. So let's change very fast. Let him use now. Uh, when he comes to Mombasa, he should not speak. He should give us na- na- on the platform to speak for him. It will be better yeah. because we know the Swahili of these local people here. <laughs> okay. Um, Jacob, you've heard what the, the, the two have said, ja- uh, Hamisi and, and Tabitha. But then, uh, th- this was quite o- open and quite... Um, so to speak, the, the deputy president was so open on this, on his tour of central Kenya from Friday, Saturday uh, through Sunday. Uh, perhaps he was so strategic in terms of his messaging because he knew he was at the home top of the president, right? Yes. Uh-huh. Well, I think uh, you're asking when the deputy president asked the, uh, the president to sit back and let him face the right honorable right right uh-huh. ahead yes on. right yeah i think it was strategic mm-hmm. uh, because uh, he was speaking it from uh, the home turf of the president mm-hmm. and i think he's in order to say so mm-hmm. uh, 
because uh, the, the race actually, as it stands today, as much as we have other contestants who are going to come in uh, for the presidency, uh, as it stands today, the front runners are the uh, the current deputy president, uh, mm -hmm. Dr. William Samoe Ruto, mm -hmm. and the then uh, uh, Prime Minister uh, Raila Molo Dinka. Mm -hmm. So I think it will just be uh, prudential uh, for the president uh, rather to sit back and uh, let these two gentlemen uh, face each other on the campaign trail, mm. uh, especially when the IBC officially calls the, uh, or rather uh, uh, calls it on. Yes. Uh, we'll talk Monday to Friday, January to December, but mm -hmm. my belief as a person or uh, as a Kenyan, what this country needs today most is civic education. Mm. To tell Kenyans about their obligations as the citizens of this country yes. and tell them about their rights so that they can make informed decisions. Mm. But if we leave uh, politicians to tell us what to do, because they come out, th th there are so many big conferences, conference rooms in this country. Yes. Why can't they go and sit together and tell each other all these things they come to TV or rather they come in public to tell us what do they want us to do? Mm -hmm. For example... The, the, of course the, the, that is politics and they know how to play it better. Uh, yeah, but they, they, they sit, let them sit in a conference and talk and come and tell us we have a decision. Mm. This is what we've talked to the president and we've agreed that this is what we are going to do. Mm. Other than coming and telling, Ambia Uyo, mm -hmm. do they expect us to go and tell whoever they are they, and they, perhaps that's what Kenyans love. It's, it's a political season. Yeah, and that is why I started by saying yes. what we need is civic education mm. so that Kenyans are informed for them to make informed decisions, mm. for them to elect the correct leaders in office, yeah. for them to know where their taxes go, wh wh when they're paying taxes, what are the taxes supposed to do? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, you know, um, Tabitha, what, what's, 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 how is it going to change the perception of Mount Kenya? The deputy president going there for three days and campaigning, calling on the president to step aside, to step uh, as aside, you know, uh, stand aside and let me face the Honorable Ludinga, who is his uh, competitor in the, in the race, head on. Um, is it going to change the voting pattern ultimately? Will it? I, I think uh, for my end, it's a no. It, mm. can't just, um, um, it can't just affect the voting pattern automatically like that. Yes. As I said earlier, that um, we cannot, of course, and underestimate or underrate um, the kind of following also that the deputy president has a little bit from the yes. central part of Kenya. Uh, and, and, and he understands that he literally needs votes from that place mm. because it is the, it is the, it is the, the president's um, backyard. So he has to go there time and time again. But of course, he, he's also been telling us that the central Kenya is sure that the whole central Kenya are going to vote for him as their own uh, preferred presidential candidate. So of late we have seen him having um, some sort of fear and that is why he has to go there time and time again. The only mm. mistake he's doing is that number one, he goes there and do not literally sell himself as an individual, but goes there with the narrative of the president. Mm -hmm. Already the president has taken his side. So we need to move on past this. Now what, what, what next? What next? So that if at all he wants to persuade uh, the voters from that part, uh, then the voters will be like, now the president has taken his side, but mm. Honorable uh, William Ruto also wants to be a president and wants our support. So on, uh, on what grounds? That is the big question. And like what Jacob is saying, when they have good civic education, uh, uh, they will understand that um, they need to, to, to vote this and this type of a leader, not because mm. he's very good in, 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 in talking about other people in, in a, in a bad way or trying to demean this and this person for him to be seen to be better but uh, because um, he has brought us ideologies that we literally find to be some things that we can associate with I, I was really um, taken aback especially even as a country uh, we were taken aback by some of the remarks that were made by politicians from the central parts of Kenya aligned to the deputy president Whatever uh, uh, Moses Korea and the likes um, were trying to perpetrate over, over the weekend uh, during those times when they were in central Kenya for their tour, those were not things that we initially wanted to hear from them. 
uh, there are mm. things that do not have any basis. They are dividing the country because when you call a particular uh, community in a, some sort of way, then you still need us or you need them to to, to, uh, to want to vote and have. Uh, and, and this person is supposed to be symbol of national unity, mm. uh, and you want to try and demonize other people on on lines that are literally very very mediocre. Then yeah. that yeah. is not something we want to really truly support. So mm. we, as a country, we are very democratic. And I, actually, I want to applaud Honorable Era Modi. He has been pushing for democracy for this country that we are enjoying right now, the freedom of speech and expression. It wasn't something that we would experience during the early times when Kenya got independence. So as much as we have the democracy... That that Kenyans of cannot get freedom of speech. Give me my time. Give me my time. You'll have your time. <laughs> okay, fine. Give me my okay, time. Okay. Thank you. So as much as we have the freedom of, of speech and association and movement, let us respect people's personal opinions. Let us also not step too much on, on, on issues that literally do not hold ground and other people will feel attacked. Mm. Better still, as Kenyans at, at this particular time, we have issues affecting us. Even in my community, I always involve them and tell them. I was telling um, some women whom we do economic activity served with in terms of empowerment. And I was telling them, right now, you know your issues as business communities. And, and, and literally, from, right down from the NCA, it should not be how fluent or how good somebody is in coming to, to, to discuss or trying to influence you to vote for them. But literally, what do they have to show that they have you at heart and they actually mm. can make even the environment for your businesses um, favorable and even the policies around them so that you can vote them in as leaders. So I think if we can upscale our conversations like that up to the national level, then we will not be back here, Victor, discussing of any analyzed presidential election come August, past August 19th. Okay. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, Amisi, what's your take on that? And just to, as you answer to that question, do you really think uh, the call for the deputy president calling on the president now to step aside, to stand aside rather, will tell how the voting pattern will be in the Mount Kenya region? It might and it might not be because it depends on how it is received, on that message, mm. how it is going to be received. One of the things that somebody will ask, he will say, why go to a market and ask those market people? the common people to go and tell the president to do this. If we were looking at the strategies. What is the best way? Are there no other channels that the, the deputy can reach the president so that they can iron out these things? So people say, ah, this is politics. You know, the moment we dismiss it as politics, then the plus or minus may not, may not be there. Now, suppose tomorrow, uh, which is possible, or next week, the possible, the, the president goes to the same area and say somebody came here and he was telling you to do this, this, this. He is going to undo exactly what has been done. If it yep. was uh, <laughs> my team, I would advise that those who are speaking the language that may uh, affect other people should be should be told to soften. What they should do is explain. The whole Kenyan system right now is about economy. Let's mm. explain mm. better the the is this upwards economy or from down to up economy. How will it affect possibly the, the common man or the, uh, the, the Kenyan people? And then mm -hmm. I've also heard from the Zimiro side, they're also talking about economy. What, what steps, economic steps that would be taken to be able to arrive at improving the, the, the care? Somebody was mm -hmm. saying both, both can work depending on how they are being approached. You cannot feel the glass from the bottom, you can only feel the glass from the top. That is one yes. uh, economic mm -hmm. concept. Mm. What suppose we pour more money from the national to down? The down will also get the money and they'll come up. The other people say, okay, from down is we're saying improve the base like a triangle, improve the base, and then you fill the glass. So these are the things that can be softened in terms of a language yeah. that the citizen can understand in a soft way. In a, a, a like what I said earlier, Jacob is Kiswahili Safi you know what I'm trying to say not talking on top of him because they will you will be chasing them away so language of the economic uh, the policy economic, economic model that is coming from bottom up and the other people the language from the economic model whatever they want to say so that we, 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 we compare which one will be better for us the rest is uh, language that will not affect 
In fact, they should not spare more time talking about the individual. They should spare more time about issues, mm. policies, development, accessibility, security, okay. and, and, right. and the like. So I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm repeating advisory at this time. Let's focus on policies, economic, and the development, and then mm. we look at a good language to pull people back to, to ourselves. Absolutely. Okay, um, gentlemen, lady, allow me to call for a break briefly. When we come back, we'll be coming back to the final stretch of this discussion. Just for us, I'll get back to you when you come back after this particular break. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back. Uh, oh, okay, Tabitha, we are back on air. All right. <laughs> all right, uh, Tabitha Gutu, all the way from Sierra. We have got Tamisi Boga from Mombasa via Zoom, as well as Jacob Mlako in studio. Um, Jack, uh, Jacob, you wanted to say something before we take a break? Yes, I was going to touch on uh, what uh, we actually ne need to do a lot of uh, agriculture and do a lot of uh, industries. And these should be devolved. Let, let, us have, uh, let us have agriculture and industry devolved as per the devolved uh, governance units. Mm. Let Busia produce what it, it can produce best. Let uh, Tarakaniti County produce what it can produce best. And let Machakos produce what they can produce. Mm. Mm. Let them consume what they can consume. Uh, the surplus can be put into industries for processing. Right. And then they can sell to other counties or even export okay. so that we create wealth. Okay. Habisi, why is the President Ruto's biggest elec uh, 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 headache come towards August election? Why? Uh, come again, Baker. Why is why President Kenyatta <laughs> Ruto's biggest headache as we head to the election? Yes, because, brothers, when you're about to change from one leadership to another, from one system to another, from one mm. a, a theory to another, in terms of this modeling, there'll be this kind of uh, friction, but uh, we must manage, we, we, we must manage them. Like uh, what my brother is saying about the economic uh, model, yes, what I was saying and what we are saying is, let that explanation come out so that we know if we pick up this one, the economic model will be improving agriculture, improving industry at, at the county level. And then somebody says, yes, we are, we are doing that because we are saying more money must go to the counties so that the counties can be able to facilitate. You know, all these are talks and they must be structured so, so that somebody can see a way. The raising of the money is national. And therefore, the distribution is national. But how much is getting to the bottom uh, before the bottom can come yes. up? So those are the kind of uh, the, uh, discussions we must have. How will it be? Because it mm. cannot be just from the bottom or from the top. It must come from some place. So we are happy that uh, this now is a discussion. And this economy is an issue. And let us take, because you cannot improve education without the economic level. You cannot improve all this. So it's a good topic, political topic to discuss, but let's come out with some strategies. And if you if you think back, yeah. we have come a long way in terms of addressing some of the things that are being said by the, our politicians today. So let them package a, a nice a nice thing that can be sold to the people. And then in most cases in scientific yeah. matters, yeah. we do a pilot. Let's pilot one area. Let's pilot Nairobi, Mombasa and Kisumu mm. and the uh, Kirinyaga and they say, oh, it is working. You remember the health aspect of uh, Makweni. Everybody went to Makweni to check how is the professor doing with the health. So th those are some of the things that will encourage us. This economic uh, uh, model, mm. why don't we practice it? We have six months. It doesn't take three months to be able to uh, start a pilot. But people say, oh, this is what is mm. being thought about. So let's do it scientifically. Let's do it with a lot of social and moral uh, thinking behind. And let's do it with yeah. improving 
the, the improvement of the community as a unit, like what Jacob is saying, by giving them power. If you sell your, your goods at um, the market, you will get some feeding. If you, the transport system is there for you to send your goods. Uh, buyers are there, either locally or internationally. You know, these are some strategies that you can sell. Grow the uh, avocado here. If we can't finish it in Kenya, the, the national uh, government can look for, for, okay. for market somewhere. This is what must be put in a paper and then put in practice so that we know we, we are coming. There's no government system that does not want continuity. Will Mount Kenya abandon the president as their de facto leader? No, they will not abandon the president. They won't. Uh, they won't abandon the president. Uh, why should they? What are the grounds for them abandoning the president? Uh, it, it's not. Um, it's not something that is likely to happen. What, mm -hmm. what we likely to experience in Mount Kenya is democracy, basically. That some people will vote for honourable. Okay, uh, it seems we. You. Tabitha, we have a problem with your audio there. We'll get back to you shortly. Let's just address that very quickly and get back to Tabitha and get her view. The same question I'm throwing to you, Jacob. Do you think even after, you know, the, the, the deputy president campaign in the Mount Kenya region, he's um, quite vocal about it. Uh, will it change the mindset of the Mount Kenya region? Well, 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 well. Uh it might not change much, mm -hmm. but uh, where uh, where I sit or where I stand, yes, I don't think the president has got uh, uh, the majority for lawing in uh, in Mount Kenya. Mm -hmm. The Mount Kenya people already know what they want, mm -hmm. and they want good leadership. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that they already decided that they are going to vote for the deputy president mm -hmm. William Ruto. Mm -hmm. I think they are still speaking among us themselves. Yes. To get to know who Which is the direction, right, the, the right direction to take. Uh -huh. So I, I can't say it's going to sway how they are going to vote. Uh -huh. Yes. And uh, maybe just to touch on uh, what you asked, uh, Mr. Hamisi, uh, why the president is uh, Ruto's August election headache. Uh -huh. Is a headache because uh, the president still uh, has a grip on the state machinery. Uh -huh. And um, you've seen what has happened uh, before, uh, silencing Ruto supporters. Uh, so it is uh, believed through selective prosecution mm. and uh, shielding uh, people who are purported to be on the other side of uh, the political divide. Yeah. He is also um, going to be a headache because uh, he is going to eat into the support base that they had in the previous elections. Uh -huh. So this is something that uh, should worry the deputy president and uh, I believe his handlers uh, are able to, uh, to go around or rather get the best strategy to, to address this. Mm. Yes. And, uh, you know, it, it must be... A big headache to the deputy president because he's trying the way you put it the president is still in control of the entire government talk of uh, the intelligence talk of everything and he is the sitting head of state so perhaps the biggest uh, worry that the dp might be having or lack of it is that um, the influence might not work in his favor but he's outgoing so once all those things are deployed the state machinery and what have you then it might lead to unfair competition. That's what uh, the pres deputy president probably has been talking about. Yes, exactly. You've uh, pu pu put it the right way, what I did not capture. Mm. We are, I, I, if it continues the way we, it's going mm. today, then uh, we are assured of uh, an election that is not going to be free and fair. Mm -hmm. So I wish, I, I, I will want to urge my president today mm -hmm to kindly as the deputy president has always asked him to step aside or rather stand aside and let the will be or rather those people who are seeking office to uh, go to the monainchi and ties them tell them why they, they are the best suited to take over the leadership of this country yeah so that uh, after the elections uh, in his retirement he can still uh, remain with the respect that uh, Kenyans uh, have always held mm. uh, uh, towards him, mm. other than uh, taking sides. Uh, whether the side that he, he, he chooses 
uh, takes leadership. Uh -huh. Then there are those who won't subscribe to uh, his way of support. Uh -huh. uh, will not uh, we, we will not want to to only, always uh, hold him with uh, high regard. Uh -huh. uh, those who mm, will be on the winning side, well, uh, they will uh, always uh, praise him. But I think it is a question, or rather an issue that uh, should concern everyone. Why is every Kenyan's leap on the president? Those who support Azimio are applauding him for doing so. And those who are on the other side, uh, Kenya Kwanza, are castigating him. Why is every Kenyan a leap on the president? Why can't he see that uh, Kenyans really want him to, mm. uh, uh, not to be... Uh, very much involved or actively involved in the coming uh, general yeah. elections. Yeah.